too bad, man. Not too bad. You got that intro down pat that time. Yeah, a little bit smoother that time. <laughs> a little bit clunky last week. The week before I absolutely butchered it. Oh, well. So, we're a bit out of practice because we're all sorts over the shop now at the moment. Yeah. Kids and everything, mate. So what's been happening, mate? Uh, you know, same old story to the gear. Yeah. But, um, no, not much. Not much. Just looking after a little man and getting to know Slowly him. Slowly getting used to it. Yeah. Yeah. I had my... Um, my first poo up my arm in the bathtub last night, so <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I was like, "Oh, that was a good fart," and then looked down and I was like, "Oh, all right, got to dump this out." Well, at least you're in the bath. Just quickly pull him out, wash it off, you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. Put a little bit more. That soap won't in. be the last one, mate. That no. won't be the last <laughs> one. Wait till they start talking back to you. Yeah, well, that's what you were telling me before, wasn't it? Jules yeah, is giving you shit was, about having no hair. Oh. Thought I was pulling my beard, and I'm like, "Oh, you don't pull Daddy's hair." And then my son turned around and goes, "Dad, you don't have any hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even four yet, mate." Oh, uh, walk straight into that one. Yeah. So lined up by a three-year-old. I oh, know he's gonna be a little cheeky one. That one, I'll tell you that. What did you call him? A three-nager. Yeah, three-nager. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he skipped that terrible twos and just went straight to a three-nager. So yeah. Well, we've got a three-nager and a terrible two. So. It's all going on at my place at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we've we've had to skip a couple of nights here and there, or kind of like relay a few yeah. things because your daughter's been giving you a bit of grief, hey? Yeah. So. Yeah. But nah, she's all good. So yeah, what else been happening? How's the animals, mate? Starting to wake up a bit now with this warm weather, or? Yeah, there's a few things are poking out. Actually, the beardy's finally waking up, which is good. Yeah. I've been meaning to chuck him in into a different enclosure, but haven't had the time to. Um, yeah. I mean, I've still been kind of tinkering around in here. I don't even remember what we were talking about last week, but my termite mounds are pretty much ready to slap into place. And yeah, just... Don't look like willies anymore. Nah, they look <laughs> way more like a termite mound. <laughs> <laughs> what did... Um, oh, I'm having an absolute mind blank because I'm that tired at the moment. Um, Copperhead Customs. Oh, what's his name? I forget. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I'm mental blank too. I'm terrible with names. <laughs> he put so. up the hashtag of, uh, what's hashtag, just the tip or something like that, talking yeah. about the termite mounds. So I thought that was hilarious. But yeah, no, they, they look a lot better. I'm keen to just slap them in. I just need to finish off uh, the nest boxes. I just need a soldering iron, a few holes and yep. stuff like that, and slap some sand in. And then those are done. So that might be a task for this weekend. Um but yeah, a few few things are poking up and around. I'm starting to increase feeding a little bit here and there. But yeah, what about you? Yeah, same here. I've, everything's starting to little liven up a bit now. Mm. Um, still struggling to get cricket, so... <clears throat> it's a nightmare, hey? Yeah, so I think I'm just going to suck it up and do the woody colony, I reckon, just as a backup, you know? Yeah, look, it's not ideal I mean, for... For the people that don't like to play with woodies like myself, but at the same time, yeah. it's saved me a hell of a lot of money recently and uh, and headache. At least you always have a yeah, and you always have a reliable food source in your enclosure because they breed like bugger in the enclosure. So, see, I I have tried to make a pretty conscious effort of tong feeding as much tong as I feeding. can. I do yeah for some of the smaller lizards, I'll pour a few things in here and there, but because otherwise the woodies are just living off whatever your lizards dropping out of its guts. So. Yep. They're not exactly healthy that way around either. No, that's right. Unless you're putting bits of food scraps in there. But it's very true. But, um, you know, which could help your clean-up crew as well. But, um, yeah, so I think I'm not going to... That's a bit tricky with some of the chameleon geckos and stuff. They don't really tend to want to eat off tongs. So yeah. I even thought of just setting up a little container with a bit of vaso around the edge or some flu on just at the bottom of their perch so they can just come down and pick some some off so this is how much I don't know about calves are they have they got the um, sticky toe pads or are they clawed clawed mm. I was going to suggest they'll scratch them away but yeah I was just thinking just because um, the what I used to use ages ago I can't remember who put me onto this it might have been Kurt um, but I used to get these like really shallow glass dishes that had like a, a lip that kind of came up and around oh, yeah. and for whatever reason it's kind of hard to describe without kind of showing you. But yeah, for whatever reason, the woodies couldn't climb up this lip because it was kind of like curved back over the top of the, the little shallow dish. So you could yeah. put that in an enclosure. And I used to have it like semi-buried 
and I'd put some woodies in there and they'd just stay in there until the animal had eaten them. You know, you might get a few yeah. escapees here and there, but they're predominantly not many. Stay in that spot. And you just get yeah, how like, deep's a dish? Oh, they would have been like two, three centimeters. Oh, they could climb out of that easy. That's the thing. Is I was just thinking like how they could get <coughs> out of it. Actually, yeah. they're a pretty decent sized gecko. Yeah, they're the bigger big than ones. a lot of people think they are. Mm. Yeah, you'd probably be alright as long as they can grab onto the top of it and. Hmm. You, know, you just buy one of the dishes as a tester and put a chameleon gecko in there and watch if you can get out or not. Watch it walk out. Oh, it wouldn't move while I stand in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come back at night no, to no. see if it escaped. Let's come back in and see if he's still there. Yeah. Find him curled up in the corner. <laughs> oh, that's but funny. um, yeah, no, I'll work something out because yeah, this yeah, it's, I want to make sure, you know, they're getting a good feed now, starting to warm up because they're starting to feed a little bit more now and. Mm-hmm. I notice the crickets aren't lasting too, no matter where I get them from. They don't look good. Oh, man. And like the sizes are mediums average. and they're like smalls. Yeah. yeah. But larges and they're all mediums. They can't even get larges. So. No, they can't get larges. I've been, when I've been ordering them at the shop for the last couple of weeks, they've been sending out like maybe a third to half of what I'm ordering. Yeah. So I've been doing like three orders a week just to try to get, you know, what, what I'd usually order in the week. It's just ridiculous. Hmm. You know. I feel. I feel. Picks up a bit sooner. Yeah, I feel sorry for everybody out there that. Yeah. Uh, get what they need because we've got a lot of, you know, disgruntled customers at work, and of course we cop that, and and uh, you know, the company essentially would be copping a fair bit off their their customers. So, yeah, it's yeah. Not, it's not pleasant for anybody the whole way around. Yeah, I was at. Um, I had to duck into Pet Barn the other day to get crickets because I couldn't get any, but um, I saw. They've changed their supply now. <clears throat> who are they? Who are they using? I think it said Mini Beasts. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, they're using them instead of. They were Pisces or whatever. Pisces, yeah. I think they were. Yeah. So yeah, I think they've changed the supply now. So. So I think my, uh, one of my colleagues ordered off Buyer Supplies during, the time that I was away. Because when I got back to work, there was a few Buyer Supplies boxes on the shelf. Buyer supplies yeah. usually do a good cricket, but what I find yeah. their letdown is is their tub, and their tub seems yes. to not breathe well because of the tiny little holes, and then the crickets end up getting too humid and dying in the tub. Because when yeah. I went to go and or- do an order, I was like, oh, you know what? Like I had to throw out forty boxes of crickets because they were all just dead. So I don't know when that order came in. Yeah, okay. So it could have been sitting there for a while because I, I don't yeah. know what happened in the month I was gone. But, um, yeah, to see that, I was like, Ugh. you know, that's why I don't order off buyer supplies is because they don't, they don't have good shelf life. Yeah, so that, I used to always get my stuff from buyer supplies, but I'd be putting them in big tubs when they got here. Yeah, and like... They come in a calico beer, which is fine, you know. Between you and me and, you know, ordering a calico bag full of crickets or whatever, that's fine. But it's when yeah. you sit in a box on a shelf and you might be ordering, you know, once a week sort of thing that's when it might get a bit sketchy yeah yeah but yeah I think I, I, I know I said it last week but I haven't really had the time to knock up a a box or anything so yeah. but I've been slowly ordering parts for these enclosures so once they're all here I'm going to knock these out get everything set up and are you waiting on much more for them nah no, nah, not much now I've got the foam all I could do is get the cement Yep. Got my tubes. Got my fans. I just gotta get lights. That's it. Plant lights. Yeah, right. But I've got. I do have enough here that I don't need to. Yeah. Okay. Got some jungle dawns, like you know the the screwing globe jungle yep. dawns. I've got a bunch of them. Yep. Um. So I'll probably just use them. I'll eventually change them over to the lights I want to use, but they'll get me out of trouble. Yeah. Or at least. Because uh, I kept all. I kept all my jungle dawns when I sold everything. You were smart. You should have kept your other Miss King that's here now as well. <laughs> yeah, should have, but hey, at least it went to good use. <laughs> went to good use. It's just sitting here and then occasionally I'll hit spray on it and then I'll go, <laughs> oh, now i got water all over my glass. <laughs> and I'll get yeah, in there and polish used, my glass. It but... used to get put to good use. Yeah, it used to. It used to. Yeah. No. But, um, yeah, no, nah, it's all good. I've still got a Miss King, so. I think I'll be using it a fair bit during the warmer months just to try to bump up the humidity and stuff because... Monitors seem to go nuts with that. Yeah. Just that increasing humidity. So. 
But yeah, I, um, it's been good. Where I've been working like around St. Ives. Yep. And like just the amount of like moss and stuff that like I sent you a picture the other day. Someone's front grass. Mm. It was just moss. Yeah, I had to zoom in like, on there that. There was no grass. I was like, what do you mean? That is a lawn. And then I zoomed in and there was like a few str- strangly sort of bits of grass actually through the moss lawn. Yeah. Did that get much sun, that lawn? Nah. It gets a little bit. Like when I, I sent you that picture, that's pretty much all. There's just trees everywhere in like, yeah. this part I was in. But um, yeah, there was some cool plants growing out of rocks and moss and just on like a retaining wall on the street. It's funny, once so you start looking like, for it, you'll find it everywhere. Yeah, I was just like, I'll take some of that, I'll take some of that. <laughs> Every day I just put in my esky and bits and pieces here and there and give my wash off and, you know, I've got a little incubator set up that I stick them in 40 degrees, stick the moss in for like 40 degrees yeah. for like a couple of hours, for like a day. That way it kills any fungus that the frogs don't get, like I don't transmit anything and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. That's oh, good. Oh, yeah. Good idea. A fly on this screen. Bloody hell. That's like those dust moths that come across mine every now and then. And you reckon they're ghosts or whatever? Yeah, I thought they were orbs or something <laughs> flying through your thing. <laughs> but, um, Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, no, so I'm just keen to get these things done. You'll get there. <clears throat> I will. I just, yeah. Once I've got the stuff, I, like I said, I'm just going to, a few nights, hammer them out. You're a lot smarter than I am, though, because I've kind of gone, oh, yeah, I've done this background, and then I'll stick it in, and then I'll go, oh, I want to pull it out and change this, and, you know, I've been going on it for about a year now. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm keen to try the concrete, though. I want to see what that's like, because that, that video that Cooper did on that background where he kind of, like, remade that background recently, that came out awesome. Yeah, that looks unreal. Yeah. Unreal. That's pretty much what I want to do. Yeah. Not over the top rock boulders or anything like that, just pretty well flat with a bit of detail in it. Mm. Nice big crevices in it, in the corners and down, you know, diagonally somewhere or whatever. Yep. Just shove a bit of soil in there, just put some moss in there. And I've got some um, moss that's just like germinating mm. as well. So I'll sprinkle some of the stuff in there and hopefully it just grows. I've got some ferns that I've dried some seeds out on. But I'll sprinkle in there as well, and hopefully it'll all over it starts growing. So, at least you're a patient guy. Yeah, it doesn't have to look like amazing out of the bat. Like once the ferns start growing by themselves, it'll be great. Well, look natural too if they do. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and they they should root pretty good in there too. So, yeah. are you going to do like cracks with with like um, soil and stuff in there, or are you, are you using like ferns yeah. that it can just live in like an actual crack? Uh, but a bit of both. Yeah. What I'll do is I've got so like I'll get some moss and I'll just put some of the um, sort of your seeds are they? I don't know what you call it from the ferns. I'm not I'm not a culturalist, but yeah, I've been watching videos. But yeah, I'll just sprinkle some of that in the moss and just wedge it in the cracks and just stay. Hope, like I'll keep it moist enough. I'll have the misking aimed at it. And, yep. But I'll have some cracks with soil in it and that kind of thing. So yeah, we can. a bit of trial and error really. Good stuff. Don't worry, like I just have brown plants that died. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of brown plants that died, I need to get into those ferns and stuff that I had in the um, the Boyd's Forest Dragon enclosure because I yep. just got laxed with them. So the little bird's nest just ended up carking it. So I might end up trying to do some sort of like moss just in that crack as well, just to give it some, but yeah, something that's pretty low, low maintenance. So I've definitely got my hands full at the moment. Yep. I'm, I know the feeling, mate. I know the feeling. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So, you got anything else that you want to kind of touch on or do you want to get into a bit of a topic tonight? Yeah, let's get into a bit of a topic, Something eh? a bit different. So, yeah, basically tonight we just want to have a bit of a bit of a casual yarn about other sorts of hobbies that kind of complement reptile keeping. So, Yeah. You kind of seen them pop up on social media lately, and people, you know, all the different hobbies that have popped up as side hobbies from reptiles, and it's good to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, we already talk about a few of our kind of reptile side different hobbies, side like ones, yeah. yeah. In particular, probably book collecting. Uh, yeah, exactly. Say for yourself, that seems to be a big one. That um, I think a lot of people are kind of pushing into that a little bit more these days. Yeah, I've noticed that. It's good. Like, you see a lot of posts now about 
people wanted different books and stuff like that. And it was good to go to the book launch the other day for the Herb Society and um, see people bidding on books. That I surprisingly didn't bid, but that's a weird. No, it was good hey, to see. I've never actually yeah, thought no, about it. I was ready that. to bid too. I was ready to bid, but there was one book I was keen to bid on, but someone else was bidding on it and they wanted it, so. I was, <clears throat> You let them have it, in other words. Fun. No, I'm not like that, but, you know. <laughs> they probably wanted it more than I did, so. Oh, that's I was fair like, I'm not going to drive up. I'm not going to drive up the price for this person. Like, Yeah, fair enough. You know. But, um, yeah, the other book that went for $1,500, I was never going to bid on that because I knew it was going to go for a ridiculous price. But, you yeah. know, it's the only signed one out there, so. Yes, yes it is. That's going to be worth a bit of money. Yep. Imagine the hindsight when they come out, just go out and... I know, but hit they was talking about it when in the meeting that when they when it came out and they got word of it, they were getting pulled off the shelf that a bunch of people just went out and bought as many copies as they could. So. <laughs> There's a few of them floating around, but oh, one popped up for sale the other day, expression of interest. Yeah, right. On the Facebook page. Because you, you've yeah. already got one of them, don't you? Yeah. yeah, I just need one. That's it. I'm happy with one of them. Yeah. <laughs> a side one would be better, but you know, I, will. I didn't really want to splash that much cash on a signed book. So no, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. But yeah, book collecting is one of those things that I think that's um, come around a little bit. You know, it's, it's yeah. something that I definitely didn't take note of uh, so much. You know, going back six, seven, eight years, nine years ago, whatever. Yeah, but um. You know, I, I'd always have a few books here and there and then all of a sudden you have a bookshelf full of it and then I get talking to you and then I'm basically screwed. So, <laughs> that's, uh, that's true. Yeah. But uh, it's good to see there's a lot more books coming out now too. Well, there's been like, what, half a dozen this year at least? Well, oh, sorry, there's at like least. a couple, no, couple of months, that. sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say no, there's like a dozen yeah. in the last couple of months. So, I've got two more coming this week, I think. Ooh. So. Any that we know about or, or you found another? Not new ones. I only ordered them the other night. I think I, I might have mentioned them last week. It was um, the Phil Repco- Reptiles of New South Wales, I think mm-hmm. it was, with a Broadie on the cover. Yep. And then, what was the other one? That was the fourth edition, if I'm not mistaken. The fourth edition, yeah. yeah I don't think I've actually, I need to check if I've got other editions of them. I don't think I do. Um, I saw somebody actually get ripped off with that day. I think yeah, it was, it was Adam. Adam. Adam, yeah. He bought it, got the third edition, so I'm like, I might do that because I don't think I have it. <laughs> yeah, right. But um, but he said it was good because he doesn't actually have that edition, so, you know, it kind of worked out good for him. Um, <laughs> Getting rid of old stock, but they're uh, turning them over at the bookshop. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm just trying to find my email from... Oh, I've got the paperback version of Rick Shine's book. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Because i got the hardcover, so... Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. That. But, um, no, but yeah, I was lucky that I didn't move all my books on when I sold everything, all my other stuff, when I was going to get out. I think and that's then, one of those things that I'd never sell. Neither. I, I love, like when we're talking to Scott and you can see Scott's like big library behind him of books, like I'd love to just have my own office. Yeah. Just filled with books, you know, like. Why not? It's, and it's knowledge as well. I just like going and sitting down and actually reading a book. Like, yeah, like, I don't really have much time for that. Well, no, sorry, I should rephrase. <clears throat> Not necessarily <laughs> having the time for it, but in the same breath, kind of just being able to get, have that option to sit down and do it. Like, I find that exactly. so much nicer than, you know, getting out your phone and getting on Google or something like that. Like See, I lose, if I'm on my phone to read something, I lose concentration. Mm. Yeah. Like, it's, that's, the, that's the biggest problem with social media. You know, I'll open my phone. And I'll be like, like I can't do audio books, I can't do e-books. Mm. So I'll like, if I did, I'd start reading it, and then I'd close it, open social media, and just start flicking through pictures. Yeah. You know, like whereas we're with a book, you put your phone down, and I pick up the book, mm. and I'm actually reading the book, and you know, gets my attention. Yeah. Yeah, I know what so. you mean. I know what you mean. And they come in handy for stuff too. Like even as I said, like yeah. Doing the, like a reference doing those termite mounds I was like oh sweet I've actually got a book on termite mounds so there you go I can sit down and I can flick through that and have a bit of a, a read of that or 
you know, it, yeah, reference photos to any of these lizards and stuff like that that I've got. Yeah. Sweet. There's some habitat in the background there that I can have a look at. Yeah, and I love the new um, segment that NPR have done, the book review one. Yeah. When they do the, the podcast, that's pretty cool, so I enjoy that. But, uh, I can't read books that quick. <laughs> I can if I put my mind to it. I actually read really quick. It's just finding the time to read. Yeah. You know, but um, it's because, yeah, because I've got so much other stuff I've got to do, kids, and it's all right when they go to bed, but that's my time to just... I just will zone out. <laughs> Relax yourself, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> just sit there and watch some mind-numbing thing on YouTube. Yeah. Luke, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever, ever want to fall asleep, I just start watching myself. Yeah. See, I, I always wanted to do... That's another That's another side thing, YouTube. Yeah, watch. it's not even on the list, really. You know? But, you know, nah. content creating. Let's call it, let's call it that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which I love. I'm a sucker for content um i'd love to in saying that i've actually been pretty quiet on social media lately i just you know haven't been on it too much but youtube yeah i usually sit on youtube at the night time when everyone goes to bed what? get in those youtube rabbit holes i've definitely dropped off it just because of our hours changing at work and stuff a bit i don't have like a long lunch break like i used to and and yeah. things but i used to kind of sit down at lunch and just that's all i do is I'd, I'd yeah, I don't get my long toilet breaks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I, I a massive consumer myself. Um, but in saying that, like, even just, like, the creating side of it, like, I enjoy the, yeah. the process of putting together videos and stuff and, you know, finding a song <clears throat> and doing all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so I love the idea of it. I've always wanted to do it. I wanted to do it years ago. But I'm a pretty shy person, like... <laughs> You know, even talking like this, so doing this is all right because I just feel like I'm talking to you. <laughs> but like, there's nobody else listening, you know, mate. No, nah, I can't go up to like I don't. I could. I don't want the person to go up and talk to someone. Like people come talk to. Like I just. I've never been like that. Yeah. Unless I know them. If I know them, then I talk to them. Yeah. I'll talk your ear off. But if someone comes up to me, I'll talk. Especially if they talk about reptiles, I won't shut up. But. I don't like the initiator, so I always get embarrassed to put my face on like YouTube, and I just look at myself and just shake my head like, "You're an idiot, mate. What are you doing?" I often think about how I even started that rabbit hole. Hey, and I I don't know what the instigator was. Yeah, like I never like woke up one day and was like, "Hey, I'm gonna create a YouTube channel and do these kind of videos." Like, yeah. that was never even a thought in my head. But yeah, I think I'd just done a couple of uploads or whatever and I think Coop came around and filmed my collection or whatever and I was like, oh, maybe I should film a few more things here. You know, because yeah. I could see that there was a fair bit of interest on Cooper's video. Then it just kind of snowballed a bit. But I enjoy it. I, I, it's funny because my wife actually has a background in uh, like making TV, like legitimate TV drama series and stuff like that. So yeah, right. she was like a second AD on... What was the show? Home and Away. No, it was like <laughs> something about women murderers. I can't remember what it was. Oh, was that Wentworth? No, that was a prison show. Yeah, it? yeah. It was kind of like more of like a, these were actual stories that, or well, actual things that happened. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But then they did like all the reenactments. So she got to play with like, well, not her personally, but she, like on the set, they got to play with like guns and explosives and like blowing yeah. up cars and all sorts of weird stuff like that. She used to go out like she'd be like, "Oh, I'm off to work at like t- you know midnight. I've got to go blow up a car at three a.m. <laughs> Whatever you <laughs> That's know, cool. it's like stuff like yeah. that. And now it's kind of like roles are reversed. I'm like, oh, what do you reckon yeah. about like this shot and doing this pan or whatever like that? And she's like, oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. She's like, it's so weird to hear you talk about that though. Yeah, you know? it's good to see some of the young kids get out there and doing YouTube as well. Like, but yeah, yeah, I love it. Oh, uh, mate, everyone, give it a crack. At the end of the day exactly you know. and if it's like a little side hustle and even if you can make the odd dollar or two here and there get you back out on your next herb trip buys you your next camera buys you know like yep people just need to be more supportive of other people too i think <clears throat> rather than yes you know like everyone should just support everyone like there's enough people in the world to watch mm. a million youtube like channels mm. so you know 
very big thing and there's plenty of room for everybody and you know if you, exactly. if you make it half interesting people will definitely watch um so look if you make it weird i'm sure people will watch too you know oh, yeah. maybe you should start one but like wear a different wig every time you do it <laughs> <laughs> just keep it like real spicy like that you know oh yeah that'd be pretty funny there's jason <sighs> in like a you know a purple bob this week <laughs> Bohawk one week, purple bob the next, blonde, dreadlocks, you know, do it all. Yeah. Oh, that'd be pretty funny. Oh, I don't think I could do that. I just, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Oh, you could just update everybody with a two minute video of what your chameleon geckos did this week. Yeah. I saw them eating. <laughs> but, yeah. No, but yeah, I do, I do love consuming all that content. <clears throat> it's good to see. I, I find like a lot of it too. Like, I don't know about you, and obviously this is like a very personal thing for everybody because everyone's going to have different sorts of content that they like to consume apart from just reptile content. But like, and this will kind of relate probably to a few other things further down the line here, but I love watching videos of people doing like photography stuff. And yeah. I love watching videos of people doing like camping stuff or like yeah. traveling like around Australia in particular, that sort of gear. Yeah. Um, obviously a lot of reptile stuff, um, you know, videos on how to look after plants, how to look after yeah. aquariums, you know, whatever it might be, but Yeah. See I watch heaps of um I watch a lot of like touring four driving mm. videos on YouTube. And I also watch a watch a lot of like terrarium builds as well. Oh uh, yeah. There's a few good ones I like that I could just like especially just before I go to bed. Like I can't remember what are they called. Uh, it's a uh, I'm not too sure what it's called. I have to double check, but they play like real calm music mm. when they build it so they go for like 10 15 minutes and it just kind of like winds me down ready for bed like yep. you know so but um but like that's a thing like you get into your reptiles you get into like touring you get into photography yep. you get into like camping it's all these other avenues that that lead you into as well so which will probably lead into a few other topics yeah I mean, even just on the on the kind of like side topic of, of book collecting, just to kind of round it back out and kind of finish that one off. But even even collecting like um, reptile paraphernalia. Yeah, exactly. You know, like I've got a shelf here that I've got like <coughs> little rattlesnakes from Arizona that my missus bought back. You know, like little kind of ornament frogs. My dad dad yeah. recently went to Bali and got me a wooden komodo. You know, like just all sorts of stuff like this. That's um. Yeah. Well, there was. I know in the the book group on on Facebook that yeah you got the like these name plates these, these are name, yeah. name plates from the reptile park yeah know? like I know a lot of people collect old snake bite kits yep so like the old tourniquets and all that stuff and they actually auctioned off um, Rick Shine's old head pinning tool oh cool so it's like his original one that I think he got from someone else yeah right. So it's like, yeah, they auction that off. So there's all those other things, you know, that you can collect, and not just books, but paraphernalia, you know, the old snake bite kits, like the old postcards from the reptile park. Yep. They get traded around a bit. Um, you see the old stamps here and there, yep. coasters, um, posters, magazines. Posters are a massive one. I mean, have a look around me. Yeah. I've got reptile yeah, exactly. posters and everywhere. You, you can't see mine, but yeah, I've got them as well. I can, I can but, barely yeah, see like, you. Yeah, exactly. I'm in the dark tonight. It's a good thing you smile a lot. Like, yeah, you see my teeth. <laughs> At least you know I clean my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like all that kind of stuff. Like I've kind of refrained from going down that path yep. of collecting some of that other like snake bite kits. Like I'd love to, but there's a lot of books I'd I want to try and get first, if that makes <laughs> yep. sense. But um. But yeah, there's definitely all that old cool stuff, like the old reptile park stuff and all that. I imagine one day when you're old, mate, and you you know maybe you've sold all your lizards on, but you could still have that kind of office like Scott and with all your books. And then you could have yeah. like cabinets full of, you know, that sort of other other gear that you might collect in a few years' time or whatever. You know, it's... Yeah, exactly. I probably will start to over the years. I think so. And it's one of those. And things... talk about cricket shortages. I've got to play cricket non-stop chirping the whole time. You better find out where he is so you can feed him or something. Yeah, I know. That's like $6 cricket right there. Yeah, supply and demand. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, that's something I'd definitely love to do eventually. Start getting into all that kind of stuff. It's just, I don't think, I, to be honest, I don't think I'll get rid of animals anymore. Like, 
Geckos and stuff. I can't imagine doing it. I'd always have something. I thought the same thing and then it got to a point where I just didn't have time. But, mm. I mean, I still had my books. I was still, I was still ordering books and buying books when I didn't have the animal. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So I still had one foot. I still I deleted a lot of the Facebook groups because I wanted to get rid of the temptation and stuff like that. But I still, you know, followed Instagram. Mainly I followed a lot of herpers, but... Do you, like, I mean, you know how, like, Facebook kind of turned around and decided, like, hey, you're not allowed to sell animals. Everyone's selling animals yeah. out here and they kind of started deleting groups left, right and centre. I actually think that yeah. was one of the best things that could have happened. I mean, yes, it's a pain yes. to sell your animals. But, like, I just was on a hundred different Facebook groups and that's all my yeah. feed ever was and usually it was just trash that was coming up in, yeah. in my feed. It was nothing like of really great interest. So I'm, yeah. I'm so stoked that that happened, hey, because now it's just like, uh, if I'm ever on Facebook, See, which is rarely, it's yeah, nothing there. They used to have that app called Groups so you could go on and all your groups were in there yeah. and you could scroll through and just click on the group but yeah, I know what you mean. A lot of the groups... You don't really see a lot of posts now. There's a couple of groups you see posts from, but yeah, it was kind of the same thing over and over and a lot of people just arguing with people, which I just don't have time for. No. Like, no. Arguments and this kind of thing, but yeah. It's I've definitely invited myself on, on Instagram way more. <clears throat> yeah. Looking so, at the pretty lizard pictures. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing is like the photography side of it. Mm. That's just blown up. Like, that's always kind of I, or from always what I can remember. It's always kind of gone hand in hand. Like I remember back in the old Aussie Python forum days that, you know, people would be showing their flash setups for their cameras and that was kind of not this. it was almost the start of the digital era. It was back then is when I it was a little bit a couple of years after. Yep. But um, you know, everyone had their digital camera and they had their flash setups and you know, people were using Pringle cans and <laughs> sticky taped onto their flash just so they could get the macro and all that stuff. And I remember seeing Scott Iper's set up with his triple flashes. He had the one on the top, the two around the side, like that, cut those, those setups. But then now, this day and age, like all the young kids that are jumping on board and taking it to that next level. Yeah. I don't even understand how to do half of it, mate. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to admire everybody else's photos. I don't have time for that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I definitely... That's one thing I want to try and do a little bit more this season. I'm still keen to get <coughs> out. Yeah. Like that um, that walk with Luke the other week was bloody awesome just to do that. And, you know, I was still grabbing some photos and stuff when I was out, but it was more Habitat-style things, so... Yeah. Yeah. You know, trying, to, trying to keep that sort of stuff motoring and... You know, even Luke was giving me some ideas about some stuff to do there, which was good. Man, he's got some skill to him, though, that guy. Yeah, well, he's one of them that's kind of excelled, like, mm. you know. Um, but that's the good thing about Instagram. That's why I like Instagram. It's just you post a picture, you see the picture, you read the, you can post your caption. Yeah. But it's not like people, like, I mean, I don't really read comments on Instagram, so. Yeah. Like. If someone comments on like my picture and like ask something, I'll, I'll read it. But I don't go through someone else's Instagram to read comments. Yeah. So I don't. You don't see the arguments kind of thing, which is the, I find good. Yeah. Yeah. No, hundred percent agree. But yeah, that, that's something that's kind of blown out of the water now. Is yeah, photography. That's a massive, massive part of it. It's almost like if you are herping, you got to take a photo to prove you are herping. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, that's the old saying. You don't did you really see it? Photo proof. Yeah, did you really see it? You know, a picture of it. So, yeah. But I guess that's the good thing about cameras, phone cameras, this day and age. You know. Yeah. If you went out and saw it, you can just snap a phone picture. That's it. That is it. But yeah, her, I mean, herping in general. That's that's another thing that obviously goes hand in hand with photography. So they they're, they're yeah. pretty much one and the same. But you know, there's a lot of people out there that still just go herping for the sake of going herping. And, yeah, exactly. No, it's so much fun, man. I, I mean, I love being out in the bush first and foremost. But yeah, I do love it. See, I I haven't really been on a good trip yet, but I love the idea of going out, driving, camping, mm. sitting around by a fire overnight. Like once you've done your herping, 
sleeping on the inner swag. Like I love that side of it as well. Yeah. Not just the, the, the looking for animals and the finding them and photographing them. I like the, the other stuff that comes with it, chatting with your mates, you know, sitting in the car, talking crap, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, um, that's probably the one thing I was spewing about the most that I didn't get to go on that herd trip. It, yeah. I mean, that, that was something that I was like, I needed to do that too. It's kind of nice just to have that bit of camaraderie and stuff like that. I reckon we'll have to yeah. do some this year, man. Like, even if we do bring the families along or whatever like that, for like some weekenders yeah. or whatever. I've pretty much got all my all my stuff geared up now, so, you know, I'm, uh, I even got an LED... What do you call it? LED light bar put on the front of my car so I can see the lizards easier. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Had that done on last Monday. So nice and bright. That'll make nighttime herping a little bit easier if it's going for a road cruise. Yeah, I've got the spotties on the front of the family car. I've got them on my car too, but um, yeah, I just need to get out. No, I'm keen. Definitely keen. So, yeah. But the other thing that's taken up heaps too is art. That's massive. Yeah, like at the meeting the other day, Alana's red belly and the whip snake, yeah. man. I was like, I wanted to win that in the raffle, that red belly, because I love the way it was printed on the writing Yeah, from Rick Shine's book. And I was like, man, I would, I liked it. To be honest, as, was, as you walked in, it was right on the table as you walked in. I was like, I had to buy a raffle ticket. So I bought a bunch of raffle tickets. Obviously, didn't win it, but, you know, that would have been pretty awesome to win then Luke bit it on the um, whip snake one which I think we spoke about last week yeah and that was awesome too yeah that's one thing I'd love to collect a bit more of is some, some art I was on <laughs> Alana's I think she's got a red bubble side if I'm not mistaken it's actually called Miss Baroness so she does yes I think she does yeah, she does sell her art over on there and she's got some awesome stuff like not only just like the, the the kind of drawings and stuff that she does but stickers shirts whatever you want to get it on you know, the options are yeah. all there. So, yeah, definitely worth checking out. Checking out um, yeah. Alana's work. I think when I've got a bit Come more co- buy some stuff. coin up my sleeve, I might buy a few things from there. Yeah, well, she posted the picture of the red belly mm. today. And I commented, like, oh, it's like that's an awesome piece of love. Just spewing, I didn't win it. And then she wrote back, I think I'm going to do some geckos next. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> so, paycheck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, no, that's awesome. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's awesome to see that kind of stuff coming through. <clears throat> There's so many people that are out there that are talented. I mean, you just have to have a look at yeah. um, Luke Glenn Denning, who did our logos and stuff for exactly. us. You know, like, yeah. If I had. That was good. I actually, I actually met him the other day. That the Yeah, I saw that he was there. thing, too. Yeah. So he came up and said hello. He kind of, like, I turned around. I'm like, because oh, I kept looking at him, like, you look familiar. And he came up and said hello. And I was like, I had a good chat with him. But, um, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. He, Spoke about your diamonds. Yeah, man. He's doing well with them. I, I've, he's been making some awesome looking enclosures. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. But there's also also some of the indigenous art too. I've literally just finally hung a couple of pieces outside of this room. Yeah. That I got from Alice. Alice? Yeah, I think I got it from Alice. Yeah. Got a nice... Uh, Northern long neck turtle and, and a file snake. Got them in from yeah, frames. That's all awesome. I swear I have a goanna somewhere <coughs> as well that I had that, that's there. But I've they've got like the I don't know, it's like a little A four piece of paper with a picture of the actual guy that that painted them and stuff and like a little bit of history yep. on them. So I've put that in the back oh, of the frame awesome. too. So for each one of those I've got a little bit of history kept yeah. with it. I love the indigenous art. You can see like if you look at some of like the models and stuff, you can see where they base a lot of the art from. Like you can just, it just looks like it. Kimberly Rock. Like it almost looks like, the, exactly. yeah, exactly. It almost looks like they've painted it. Mm. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely one thing I want to do is collect a little bit more art. But um, my house is pretty small and I have young kids. So I just sit on our way until they're a little bit older before I put it up. But I made sure to hang them high. Yes. I reckon I've got at least until they're 10 before they could reach it. Although in saying that, they'll probably be grabbing chairs and ladders before that, so... I give it till he, they, he learns how to throw something. Yeah, good point. Didn't Which would be about, about three. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got about two and a half years. 
Do it after three years. I oh, man. I've only just been looking around the place, looking at everything, going, oh, Jason was telling me I'm going to have to get locks and all this stuff. Yeah. Yep. I'm screwed. Yep. My son was pretty good, but my daughter, man, she's into everything, eh? Yeah. She just walked in the other day and she was standing on top of the toilet. <laughs> like on the seat or on the cistern? On the cistern. She climbed up the, to the cistern. What was she doing up she there? She first, like, I caught her first on the toilet. She shut the lid and climbed up there. Yeah, right. So we've got a little like step stool so my son can like get on the toilet, wash his hands. Yep. But I try and take it out of the bathroom. So she carries it in the bathroom, climbs on the toilet, and then I caught her on the top, and then I caught her on the TV unit the other day. So, oh dear. She's a little me. I used to climb everything when I was a kid. But this stuff scares me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's why I don't have like I've got all those posters, but I don't have any wall space in here to hang them mm. because on floor to ceiling enclosures and racks and stuff. But I'd love to just have, like I said, my own office with bookshelves and posters yeah. and art. And I'd love to get more some like more indigenous art as well. Yeah, it was um, I forget who was posting it up the other day. I think it might have been Grant Husband. He was he had like a a piece that was done on bark or something like that. I think he collects a bit of indigenous indigenous art and occasionally sells a few pieces yeah. here and there. But I think I saw that, yeah. yeah. There's some good stuff out there. It's awesome seeing the stuff in the wild too. Like as in like the actual yeah. you know <clears throat> rock face paintings and stuff like that. Yeah. Which kind of brings me through to travelling, which kinda of does go into again what we were saying about like herping photography and camping and stuff like that but being able to actually go out and see some of these places where the animals actually come from and you know experience it whether you see the animal or not like that's yeah or seeing the seeing the country as well that's one thing I, I regret not doing more when I was younger before like I don't regret having kids or anything like that but I don't regret I regret not travelling more around Australia before I had kids yep like just me and the missus just, you know, go away for a week or do whatever. Whether I went, like, we both went herping or she wouldn't really hurt too much, but she loves frogs and stuff. She does like reptiles, but if I said, hey, let's go trudge through this leech-infested forest to find this obscure leaf tail gecko, mm. she'd be like, pass, <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is understandable. But, yeah, like, even just, you know, pack it up and just going on a holiday and just seeing more of the country then stumbling across things here and there, like... Yeah. Yeah, I think my, my I've gotten my wife into that um, YouTube channel, Trip in a Van. Yeah. So she watches that occasionally with me. Like she'll sit down and be quite happy to to watch a bit of that. And I was like, see, you know, we can go out on a weekend. We can go and visit some places through New South Wales or whatever like that. She's like, oh yeah. So yeah. slowly trying to get her a bit more keen for some, you know, maybe some extended weekenders or something like that, or you know, a week yeah. or two here or there sort of thing, just doing some road trips. And of course, there'll be like that kind of like side, like <laughs> these just little side. These hustle, are the species like, yeah. that I want to find along the yeah. way. This is just the reason yeah, you're camping I'm here. Going out this night, <clears throat> so just be, just remember that, yeah. Yeah. But now, even me and my like Kim spoke, like we would just want to, you know, now that she's working now, we want to try and go away at least once a month with the kids somewhere. That'd be good. Like even if it's just up to Barrington Tops, or if it's out west, or even if it's just a bloody up the road at Nora Head. Mm. Caravan park just for a night or two, you know, just so the kids get out more and we get to spend a bit of time with the kids and, you know, come across a couple of things in the wild and, you know. Yeah, that, that'll be a time away from home too, just to kind of yeah. reset and refresh. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, because I'm working on the house all the time. Yeah. It's the same old thing. But yeah, you know, that's like another thing that, you know, people are doing all these hurt trips now and, you know, people are meeting up doing them as well. <clears throat> Know, meeting new people and traveling and seeing the country it's such a big you know big place there's lots to see oh mate it's massive like i think about how many k's we covered in that trip in march and like that was pretty pretty big and then you look at like you know we met matt and christy along the way and how far they went yeah, and then they went further again. Yeah, like they literally went from one corner of Australia to another and then like did like a loop and back up. Yeah. yeah. I love the like the map they got where they're like marking it. See, that's what I'm doing is like have a map and just mark off where I've been and like my route and that kind of thing as well. Yeah. But, you know. No, it's good. Yeah. Pretty cool. 
I think um, something else that's obviously comes kind of like hand in hand with this hobby in, in particular, if you're giving it a bit of a crack, is you can be very creative with it. So rather than just looking after your lizards and stuff like that, like if you're trying to, uh, you know, create sort of different habitats and stuff like that, now whether that be actually making backgrounds, fake rocks, you know, whatever it might be, you might just be kind of changing things up with some different, um, you know, material or whatever that you've found, you know. Yeah, different newspapers, different paper towel. <laughs> you just try to get a rise out of me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You almost finished. <laughs> I could see the look in your eye. Um, yeah. You know, the Daily Telegraph or the Sydney Morning Herald. Oh, which ink is the best to stick to my snake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those things. Yeah, no, I was just winding up. I got nothing against it, but it was just funny to see your face. <laughs> I don't have anything against it either. I was just no. like, hang on, why are we throwing this in here? <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, like it's one of those things that you can get cre- pretty creative with, you know. Like I actually used to be into painting a long, long time ago and I think that's kind of something that's really drawn me into doing a lot of these backgrounds and bits and pieces is it's a bit, bit of fun, really, you know, to be able to yeah. do it. Um, <clears throat> tedious at times when you're trying to bust out so many in such little time or whatever like that, but... Yeah. You know. Yeah. Other creative outlets. I suck at painting, so I'm good at drawing stick figures. <laughs> you'll have to uh you'll have to practice on those enclosures, mate, see if you can get some some nice colours on there. Yeah, I did try on that um when I painted that exoterra background. Didn't look too bad. With some lichen. The exoterra background? I'm trying Remember to... I covered it in um tile pointing. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, I reckon you'll be I'll right. I tried it on that. Yeah. I reckon you'll be right. But yeah, I, I enjoy that creative side of things. I think that's one of the biggest things that's a bit of a driver for me is I, I, I like I like changing things up and I like trying new things and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And, you know, I also like things to look, you know, what I consider good, so. It's another form of expression as well, you know, like. Yeah. Well, hundred percent. Like I could not probably draw a lizard to save my life, but you know I get good good enjoyment out of making a rock shape and and painting it and having fun with some different kind of tones and stuff like that. You know, to make it look somewhat realistic. So yeah, yeah, bit of fun for me. Bit of fun. I did enjoy it when I did it. I mean, I wasn't a fan of the. See, my, I, when I did my background, I wasn't a fan of the way that I carved the the rocks. Yeah. It looked good when I did it, and then when I put the tile pointing, I'm like, I didn't carve enough detail in that. Yeah. One thing that I changed is I maybe didn't carve as much detail in the rocks as what I would use to, just because, like, yeah. the pointing would take it up a bit. But then I, I'd yeah. use, you know, I'd wait for it to, like, semi-dry or something like that, and then maybe groove a few things in here and there. Um, which yeah. I think you, you, I reckon the way that you're going to do your n- new tanks will be way more up your alley and I really like the idea of yeah. that technique of kind of doing that whatever it is cement or grout or whatever like that and then kind of chipping it away once it's semi-dry yeah um, I was actually watching Christy's video on her bearded dragon enclosure again which is a freaking awesome video so if you haven't seen that make sure to check out the natural hair yeah. paper on YouTube That's a good um, one. really popular bearded dragon video and for rightly so but yeah, just like watching her do that and I was like, oh man, yeah, some good talent there, that's for sure. Um, something else that kind of goes with this hobby though, and this is something that I think I brought over from my reef tank hobby into my reptile hobby and I don't know why I didn't do it earlier, is essentially, um, you know, kind of gadgets and gear and stuff like that. Like you get people that are kind of like really into technology and that and, yeah, you know, they can get a bit of fun out of bits and pieces like that, so... You know, that's kind of only like a new thing though. Like the, like with those grid connects and stuff, that's kind of only a relatively new thing that's kind of yeah, taken off recently, you know? Like we've never really had the gadgets. Like we've had thermostats. Yep. But like there's been some pretty cool thermostats over the years. Some were awesome and then they just failed and that, mm. like they just vanished. Um, well, you know, yeah, it's taken into consideration a misking, right? Yeah, exactly. Like that's something that has been around for years. Um, yeah. Not everyone's going to go out and splurge on one of those for their, you know, bearded dragon enclosure or whatever it might be. But, you know, 
I'm glad that I've still got mine here for this room. It's just it's a bit of a, like a, oh, hey, there's this extra bit of technology on here and I don't have to spray all my lizards or whatever. Like I can physically yeah. just turn this on for 20 seconds and I'm done. Yeah. You know, like I enjoy that, having that little bit of gear. I, I do agree that like there's a lot of room in the market for legitimate uh, reptile aimed products. There's some cool ones that have come out recently too. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's... um. There's some interesting stuff on the horizon there, that's for sure. Yeah. But um yeah, like like the grid connect stuff. Like I find that that stuff's really good. I think it could use some tweaks and stuff like that to Yeah. A little bit better build quality as well. Yeah. With some of it. But yeah. I mean it's it is cheap. Like if you think about the price you pay for the power board. You know, oh hundred like percent. If that was overly expensive. If that was like a, a a better build quality and then you slap a fucking lizard on the front of it, that's a Two hundred, three hundred dollar thing in the reptile hobby, you know, versus a even if it's not a better build quality, if you just snap the slap a lizard on it. That's true. That's true. The upside <laughs> is, is brain. when you do have a board fail on you, you can just walk into Bunnings and go, "Hey, this failed without a receipt," and, and then just swap it that, straight away. Exactly. That's the best thing because I've had two fail. Mm. I know. Just go back and one failed out of the box. I couldn't connect it properly because the button was jammed. Yep. Just took it back and they're like, oh yeah, no, I just go grab another one. Just grab another one. So that button's a letdown. The Wi-Fi pair button yep. or the Bluetooth pair button, yeah. yeah. That's where the, that's what's that's the fail point. Yeah, well, that's what happened. I had one that outlet failed, yep. but it. I think it was the connection that failed, not the outlet, so that it wouldn't turn on. Yeah, right. Um, but um, yeah, I've only had issues with the connection. Yeah, like the build, the build quality is all right. Like you know, it's the plastic's tough and the cords are all right. Mm. And, but yeah, I've only ever had issues with the um, connectivity. Yeah, I've um, I've had a couple with ke- connectivity, and I've had now one or two with buttons. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought a couple of them were just fried with a bit of a storm that we had come through, but this Possibly. this week I had um had one go on Loki's wall and I was like the last couple I chucked out and put in the landfill and I'm like nah this time I'm going back and if I need to need to ask for some new ones it'll ask for some new ones and the guy was just like oh yeah here's two more take them yeah like, oh okay that was easy alright yeah <laughs> that's you. all you gotta do because yeah. I think they're the only people that stock them <clears throat> they must be yeah you Garlic is a Bunnings brand yeah but again you know like as we're, as we're saying or as we're alluding to here there's enough room in the market to be able to do stuff like that like if you take a look at like the um the reef aquarium or the aquarium hobby in general like there's a lot of lights out there that are very much app controlled by via bluetooth or wi-fi or whatever yeah. you want to do same as pumps and all sorts of gear yeah there's no reason why you can't be doing that with other sorts of features and stuff on on uh, your reptile tank. is there I, there's is there bluetooth controlled thermostats is the Evo microclimate Evo was that phone connectivity or maybe I know that the oh, what were they called there was something weird Inkbird the Ink, Inkbird mm-hmm. thermostats you got Wi-Fi connected um, thermostats for those um, yeah I'm not sure about the microclimate I'd assume I'd assume if anybody was going to do that it would be microclimate yeah um, yeah the best thermostat I ever had was a Herbstat from the US. See, I've never used them. Yeah, I bought one years ago when I had my green tree pythons. That's all they talk about over there is Herbstats. Yeah. Yeah, it was a dual, dual probe, I think it was. Yeah. From memory, I can't remember which one it was. But yeah, I bought that from the US. Yeah, right. But obviously they changed it so it works on our voltage and they changed the plug for you and stuff like that. Yep. Um, but yeah, that was an awesome thermostat. I gave that to a mate when I moved all my stuff on. I've just got tons of habit stats still kicking around here. I did like the eye stats, but then they all just... My one carked it, but then they just disappeared. Yeah, they didn't last for long, did they? They were kind of around for like a no. year or so, and then that was it. Yeah. Mm. They were cool, but... Were they the ones that came in all the like, fungi colours and stuff like that too? Yeah. yeah. They come in like... The box looked like an Apple iPhone box when you got it. Like, it was that real nice packaging and... Which is awesome in, in theory, you know, to have like a really yeah. nicely labelled product and or, you know, um, designed. The product. idea, 
it, it, the idea and like everything was awesome. I think it's just some of the components it was built with weren't the best. Mm. So they had a few issues with internals. Yeah. And then he was, I think they were, you know, sending them back and they were, I don't know what actually happened, but I think they were fixing them at one point, but then I just think like everything just kind of carked it or something. I don't know. Mm. Or me, I, I don't even know the story, but I did actually like the one I had. It was a really good thermostat. There you go. Until it stopped working. <coughs> Like anything, right? Like if something dies and it's kind of like, you know, been years, you're kind of like, oh, you know, good life. Where if yeah. it dies prematurely, you're like, well, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, but if, yeah, if you have good customer support and stuff gets sorted, you know, it's not an issue then. Like bad batches of things do happen, but yeah, I don't know what happened with them, so. Yeah, well. Yeah. Um, lights, I mean, the, I think um, there's a few guys. I think Scott's being one of them. I think he's using some of those uh, new Flugel plant lights uh, for a few of his terrariums and stuff, which are pretty cool. I believe they're Bluetooth enabled and they've got like sunrise, sunset features as well as kind of like storm features and stuff like that as well. I must get the name of these lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if, how they'd fit on your build. You you'd maybe have to sit them high across the pelmet. Ah, oh, they're bigger, though. Yeah, from memory, I want to say they start at a minimum of 600. Yeah, okay. Yeah, which might be a bit tough. Like that, yeah. Would work. Oh, no, it wouldn't. I'll, I'll, no. I'll send you a link after this anyway, and we'll um, yeah. you'll be able to look into it a bit further for yourself. But, yeah. I, I did actually consider getting one and just putting it on the roof here just for, like, storm feature. So I thought, oh, I thought you were going to seek a tan or something like that. <laughs> oh, mate, that's that many. T- <laughs> your missus comes in, you're lying naked on the floor. <laughs> what are you doing? Just get my tan. <laughs> I just have to open up all the lizard enclosures and let the t- yeah. T5s cook me. T5, yeah, you'll be right. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about when, um, a bit of a sidetrack story here that everyone can listen to, but, you know, this is just one of those weird things that happened to me working reptile retail in the early days of COVID. So I had a guy come in and pretty much buy us out of UV globes. And I was like, what do you, what do you got at home? And he's like, oh, they're just to put in my ceiling. He's like, I just want to, I'm not coming outside again or something like that. And he was like, he's just putting UV globes in his ceiling because he didn't want to leave the house because of the pandemic or whatever. But he bought like, I want to say like 10 or 15 globes. Far out. That, geez, would have been a good day that for you that oh, day. Oh, I didn't care either way. I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, but he was just getting those Exoterra coil compacts. But <clears throat> if he wanted to get UV, you probably should have bought something a little bit better. But yeah, probably would have done nothing at <laughs> the height. All right, but yeah, each their own, right? That's just one of those yeah. weird experiences. And because uh... they were saying that UV killed it as well, so COVID. Oh, okay. There we go. I'm no scientist, so I don't really know. But um, yeah, so that might have been his other reason behind it. <laughs> but uh, he was like one of those crackers that you, you know came in with like big dishwashing gloves on and big random homemade masks and stuff. He was just like one of those those kind of characters. So anyway, sold him a few yeah. hundred dollars worth of UV gloves. That's right. Yeah. Why not? Oh, well. Comes back next time and he's tanned and <laughs> <laughs> burned his retinas out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Can you think of anything else that kind of like is another little side side thing to this? crazy hobby of ours man um not off the top of my head but there's but there's all little small things as well you know like everything leads into it everything right like yeah like why why okay tattoos like yeah. if you can go and get tattoos like I've thought about heaps of times just getting like my arms done in like like reptile ones but you know this never kind of pulled the trigger. I often think about how funny it is that... Okay, so, like, I was into reptiles before frogs. Yeah. Reptiles led me to other people that were herping, so I started doing herping. And then herping led me into frogs, and then all of a sudden I was, like, deep into frogs for a fair fair while there. Like, it's just funny how the chain of events through starting off with reptiles and meeting new people throughout the hobby yeah. kind of leads you up. <clears throat> But yeah, I've always thought about doing a, like an arm. That'd be good. Kind of like a rain, rain forest, rain forest themed. Why don't you do it? Like prickly forest kinks down the bottom, and then it goes up, and you got like your 
like whatever you fill it with and it's like chameleon geckos and tree movers then boyd's forest dragons and green like as it's kind of works its way up you should do it but um yeah i've thought about it numerous times planned it out what i wanted just never really done it have you but i don't like color though i'd go black i love tattoos like yeah, that's yeah. another thing i love is i love tattoos have you got any i got one on my back that's it it's a tramp stamp kind of <laughs> i got it when i was i got it when i was 16 <laughs> <laughs> it's in my it's up the top of my back oh okay okay right. yeah not down the back <laughs> i thought it was <laughs> like three lovely roses right above the bum crack yeah. or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. So it's up the top of my back. I got it when I was 16. Yeah, right. So. Oh, there you go. I'll have to keep an eye out for that one. Yeah. 16, hey, young and dumb. I've got plenty of those. Yep. Plenty. Yep, yep. There you go. All righty, guys. Well, yeah. Um, thanks so much for joining us on this episode this week we'd like to say a massive thank you to eric and owen and the rest of the npr crew for having us if you'd like to contact them it's best to find them at moreliapythonradio.com and email them at info at moreliapythonradio.com make sure to follow the npr network on facebook instagram and youtube as far as contacting us on our social media platforms you can email us at australian hope to culture at gmail.com you can also find us on facebook and instagram as well make sure to check out our teespring store for podcast merch the link is on the facebook page to see more of what Jason is doing, make sure to follow him on Facebook and Instagram at The Gecko Effect. For myself, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, and Teespring on a beach of scaly beasts. We hope to have you back next week for another episode of the Australian Hope to Culture Podcast. Good night, everyone. Good night.